The aim of this video is to ensure the user can operate the range of fluid warming device safely and competently. After this video, the user will be able to ensure the ranger is appropriate for the intended use, be able to operate the ranger safely and competently, be able to use the appropriate accessories, be able to respond to alerts and alarms, will have a knowledge of moving and handling ergonomics when moving or repositioning the ranger, be able to clean and store the ranger safely. The Ranger Fluid Warmer safely and effectively warms fluids from KVO to 30,000 mils an hour, 500 mils a minute. It is designed to warm blood, crystalloid and colloid fluids. To check for damage, wear and faults, check for obvious signs of physical damage to the Ranger. Check the service thicker to ensure the Ranger is within its service period. Are there any limitations or contraindications for the use of the device? This device should only be used by staff who have been trained and assessed as competent as per the NUH medical devices training policy. Ensure visual and functional checks are performed before use. Ensure all accessories are available. How to be sure all the relevant accessories are available. There are two sets available for use at NUH. Standard flow which provides infusion rates of KVO to 9000 mils an hour. A high flow which provides infusion rates of KVO to 30,000 mils an hour. The total weight of this device is 3.3 kilograms. It's important to ensure a moving and handling risk assessment has been completed if required. If in any doubt regarding the moving and handling of this device, contact your local moving and handling link person or the authorised trainer or assessor for this device. How to switch the device on. The device requires plugging into a socket with a protected earth a wall socket and not an extension cable as per manufacturing guidelines. If connected to an extension socket there is significant risk of fire. It requires mains power to operate as the device does not have an internal battery. Once connected to an appropriate power supply the device can be turned on using the power switch located at the side of the device. How to know the device is working. Once powered on the device will run a self test. This is displayed on the front panel as 88 with a red light illuminated to the side of the display. Once the check is completed, the device will display the current device temperature. How to identify and understand all the functions of the device. The device is designed to heat IV fluids and blood to a fixed temperature. The set point for the device is not adjustable by the user. How to load a new giving set. The appropriate set is inserted to the front of the device before fluid is primed through it. How to prime a giving set. The IV fluid or blood enters the insert via a standard fluid or blood giving set. The giving set is connected to the insert via the short tubing with a blue cap. The fluid is then run through the line into the insert. The bubble trap is held upside down until the fluid flows into it. Once the fluid reaches the line near the end of the trap, indicated here, it should be turned to the correct orientation. How to remove U-set and dispose. The U-set can be difficult to remove as the heat generated by the device causes the insert to expand. If this is the case, then some of the fluid will need to be drawn from the set to allow it to be removed. What factors may affect the safe operation or accuracy of the device? The device has a set point of 41 degrees centigrade. When the Ranger display reads 43 degrees, an audible alert sounds. The alert light illuminates and the display alternatively flashes HI. Should the device reach 46 degrees, the device will shut off. What actions to take if there is an error or failure of the device? Remove the device from use after ensuring patient is safe and unharmed. Complete a clinical engineering decontamination form detailing any error codes or messages. If the device is involved in an incident, ensure the DATEX number is recorded on the decontamination form. Ideally, return the device to clinical engineering as it was set up and used. If this is not possible, please take an image of the setup and ensure this is uploaded to the DATEX incident form. How to clean and decontaminate the device. Clean the device following the NUH policy and our manufacturer's guidelines and instructions using green Clinel wipes. Ensure all obvious signs of dirt and contamination are removed. How to store the device safely. Ensure the device is stored in a clean and dry environment. If required, ensure the device is plugged in and switched on. 